Welcome to Monet Cafe. Friends, visitors, artistic people, and subscribers, today's lesson is going to be using acrylic ink combined with pastel for a beautiful glowing effect. Also, enjoy this original music by Hannah McFarland. It's so beautiful. I often forget to say that these pieces are available for sale. If you're ever interested in an original, including this one, please see the link at the end of the video or in the about section of this video. Now this is a piece of UART paper, uh, 400 grit that I have already prepared and taped up to my board. And these are the acrylic inks made by Dayla Rowney. The colors are, that first one was Indian yellow. This one is the red one, I'm reading it as I'm doing this, is crimson. And the pink one, the bright like fluorescent pink is called fluorescent pink. Um, it also says rose fluorescent. So there's a couple of names on that one. Anyway, I use these um, neat little trays here just to put my inks in. It's just kind of nice and convenient. But I use a combination of inks rather than just one color because I like the way they blend with each other. They make some surprising effects sometimes. And uh, here I am actually putting them in the little container. I really just did one dropper full of each color, but I did go back and add more of the pink um, because I was kind of heavy handed on the pink. Now I'll just talk as I'm doing this. Um, what I did on the UART paper is I'm going to be using alcohol. You can use alcohol or water with this. Alcohol just dries faster and sometimes it makes a more of a neat dripping effect. Um, but I've done it a combination of ways where I actually just um, dip my brush in the alcohol and then in the acrylic inks and just paint on the UART paper. Today I am going to be doing it and demonstrating a way i would never done it this way before and I like it actually both ways. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to brush the alcohol onto the UART paper almost just like uh, if you're familiar with watercolor painting almost like a a wet um, a wet on wet uh, approach. Um, so you're just going to wet the whole surface. So here's the alcohol and it's just regular alcohol you can buy at a grocery store um, and I have just a little container to put it in and I like to have some paper towels um, handy just to wipe my brush off. Uh, I have seen some neat videos and things where people have actually used like vodka alcohol also white wine um, so obviously just about anything will do. <laughs> um, I love this real bristly kind of old brush it just kind of uh, gives some neat um, effects with its um, its texture that it has. So now I'm just going to start brushing the alcohol on the paper. I was a little heavy handed with the alcohol. Um, I'm kind of heavy handed when I'm using wet mediums and things. Um, but uh, I'm just I'm not being super fussy with it. I'm just kind of brushing it here there and everywhere trying to get a pretty good application and uh, it worked well except for the fact that because I added a lot um, and a lot of the acrylic inks the UART paper uh, will kind of buck a little a little bit and it did um, I was able to kind of retape it and and uh, push it back down um, to get it to work but it was a little buckly when I went to apply my first layers of pastel um, I did miss that nice flat surface but you know I made it work so that's just a warning uh, if you do this technique make sure you tape your paper down pretty good um, also, okay, here we go. This is the pink. Now you'll see what I mean. Now just add a little bit of that yellow. Look how it turns that golden orange. Now add a little bit of red. Um, I end up using mostly the pink and the yellow just because I love that. It reminds me of an underpainting I do um, with a, a golden fluid acrylics. It's a color called Quinacridone Gold and it's just this orangey pinkish gold color that I really am able to emulate by uh, using these acrylic inks. As you can see, um, I'm not being fussy about this. I'm just letting the drips happen. Um, I did end up putting a little bit more alcohol on the bottom um, because it, it had already dried a little bit by the time I got to it. So, um, But basically you can see how that interesting design is happening. And what I love about this technique is it keeps that luminescent quality. The UART paper is already kind of light, you know, just like a, a nice pale, like beige color. Um, but if you were to put acrylic paint or um, anything other than like these acrylic inks or watercolor, uh, it really decreases the luminescence uh, of that glow you get kind of still seeing the paper uh, behind it. Also another advantage to using watercolor or acrylic inks 
is that you're not taking up any of the tooth of the pastel paper. So it's a great way to do an underpainting and not really lose um, the ability to get more layers down. So it's really kind of neat. Um, that is also, so you can do this with pastels as well. Sometimes I'll use some harder pastels and then I'll just uh, brush on a layer of alcohol um, and it, it, it sort of uh, gives you a little more layering ability, it, but it still takes up a little bit of the grit of the paper, not as much as if you didn't put the alcohol down. But uh, here I'm just adding a little bit more of that pink. I just wanted to get it, you know, uh, in different areas. And as you can see, it's very forgiving. Uh, you can just keep applying alcohol all you want. Um, other than it buckling a little bit, you won't have any problem with that. But I love the little uh, sponta spontaneous uh, effect of how it just kind of um, bleeds into uh, making its own design. A lot of those drips and things disappear as it dries. It does dry a little bit lighter, so you know. Here are the pastels that I had pre-chosen. I knew my subject matter was a poppy field. I knew it was gonna have a lot of those cool greens. And I just got a big variety of these oranges and uh, reds, peachy colors. Now I'm just using a pastel pencil here. It's such a general sketch. I really don't need much other than the kind of the little hill horizon line, a few of the trees. And uh, also I, I block in a few of the poppies. And, uh, and then I just get to work after that. Now, as I typically do, I'm getting in my darks and the really the darkest thing in this particular painting is gonna be those trees. Most things, if they're vertical, uh, they're gonna be darker than things that are flat, like the grasses. And of course, the sky is gonna be lighter. Um, so I'm just dotting in and getting in a general idea, trying not to get too fussy with this. Um, I also wanted to go ahead and get in um, kind of a, a, a layering, almost like a blanket of some of those pastels even though i've got that nice orangey glow underneath i wanted to get a little bit more of that red glow because the poppies as they recede in the distance they they almost become one you know and then they start to separate like i'm doing now as they move closer um to the viewer so um that's just kind of my my concept of getting perspective right now i'm just blocking in a few of these poppies i i didn't want to have them so huge um i just kind of wanted the to lead the eye in with some of the larger ones kind of coming in the front. Um, just trying to get a nice, decent little arrangement here, not having anything too lined up in a row, uh, having it more spontaneous like things really do in nature. Now I know those background, that the hills in the background are gonna be a cooler and lighter in value green. Uh, so I'm going ahead and establishing some of my values. I know some of those trees in the distance, they're gonna cool off a little bit and the trees as they get closer will be darker in value and warmer in color, more of a, a warm green rather than a cool green. Uh, I did uh, eventually end up breaking, that line of trees was a little bit too straight uh, going back, so I, I break it up a little bit um, by the end of the painting. Uh, but again, I'm just getting in basic uh, shapes, um, generalities, not getting too fussy, and um, working big to small, uh, less detail to more detail, and um, just continue to enjoy this, and I'll add some more commentary soon. I will mention here that this is one of the areas where I had a little bit of a problem with the buckling of the paper. Notice that my purples that I kind of added up at the top, see how they're kind of splotchy? Um, the paper was, um, was a little bit warped and so I was having a hard time filling in those areas. So typically I would just use a pastel to blend them 
but I was still having a little trouble so I end up using a piece of pipe foam insulation that I often use as a blending tool and it worked out great just to blend the sky and you know it kind of worked out well anyway because the sky is not the main focus of this or those distant hills it's going to be more of those poppies so sometimes I'll leave a sky a little bit chunky if it's going to be the focus or textured but sometimes I will blend it in if it if I need it to reseed and in this case I did anyway. notice that I've been adding some dark pastel kind of around the poppies and uh, kind of making a trail going back. I think I've been um, in some of my past paintings I've done this technique but I decided to be a little more light-handed with it today. I didn't want it to appear so dark. I really wanted this painting to have that luminescence and not cover up all of that beautiful gold that um, was achieved by using the acrylic ink. So I'm being purposeful in trying to keep a, a light hand and allow that beautiful underpainting to show through. Here's another instant in just a second where I decide to use the pipe foam insulation again. I thought those, um, the darks, I thought they could use a little blending. They looked uh, a little too chunky, a little too much texture, and I just kind of wanted this to have more of a soft feel. So I'm just using kind of the corner of it, um, just to kind of blend around the flowers. And notice I'm keeping my strokes pretty directional, almost like everything's reaching um, from the bottom left up to the right uh, and often you know paintings uh, you can achieve that effect by how you how you lay your strokes down and so I, I was purposeful in trying to make them look like they were kind of going up and then back around into the back of that field and again here I'm just laying down a few more of those reds <clears throat> you know there's going to be a blanket of those poppies in the background so I'm just kind of strategically putting in some of the reds in uh, more horizontal bands and then as they start to get a little closer 
they start to become identifiable as uh, a poppy. Uh, pardon my um, my phone there, <laughs> but um, so you you do need to uh, start making them more recognizable, and then of course gradually they're going to get bigger as they get to the front, and of course keep them spontaneous. Don't have them all in a row or or too even anywhere. They should still have that beautiful harmony. Uh, I always think of it like music. There's order and there's structure, but there's randomness too, you know. So anyway, that all that kind of comes in time as you work. I'm still getting better at it myself. Now I'm actually starting to get in some of the poppy shapes. I, I know many of them are going to be darker. They're definitely darker in the center and, and kind of coming out into the petals, but I'm still being careful so as not to cover up all of that beautiful golden glow underneath everywhere. You know, I'm leaving some of that showing. And um, the poppies, uh, they're interesting. You, you want them to appear as poppies, but they don't have to be perfect either. You want to get the general shape of the poppy. I use the sides of the uh, pastel. I'm not really drawing anything. I'm shaping them. And uh, also too, we don't want them to have all of the same direction, even though many of them are kind of reaching, like I said, up towards the, the sky and the right. Some of them should be kind of whimsical and have their own little personality be and be looking a different way. I think of them as having faces. <laughs> I know it's so beautiful to me how everything in nature seems to reach to the heavens and uh, you know how trees grow and reach upward and flowers grow and reach upward and it's like everything is just praising the Lord. I just love that. So you know I kind of um, emulate that when I work. I try to um, portray that sense of everything praising the Lord. <laughs> so if you've been on my channel long, you know I, I'm just, uh, I can't help it. I just have to share how much I love my Lord and Savior. But many of you who even don't share the same beliefs are very kind and understanding, and I appreciate that very much. So um, just more poppies. As you can see, I'm trying to give a, a blanket of poppies, but keep them um, spontaneous at the same time.
here I felt like I needed to kind of reestablish that uh, the darkness there um, a little bit of the the roots of the flowers and uh, so I just kind of worked around a little bit with a new pastel and a uh, a pastel that was more of a, a cool darker green um, because that's what's going to happen down in the shadows colors are going to cool off because they're in the shadows they're not going to be as warm with the sun shining on them so uh, again just kind of re-establishing my little my little trail that kind of leads the eye back I wanted to point out that I, I realized I needed some darker poppies that maybe were just poppies that hadn't bloomed yet or they're just down uh, deeper in the grasses and it was is going to help give a sense of, of depth to those grasses and these uh, right now um, don't appear to be rooted <laughs> because they're kind of floating right now so a technique I'm going to use to make them uh, look more like they're in the grasses is of course to add stems and more grasses on top um, but using a little bit of I probably had enough tooth in this case here but I went ahead and added a little bit you'll see in just a minute um, of the uh, Blair workable fixative uh, it's a technique that I learned from Karen Margulis years ago and uh, it's a wonderful technique for being able to get a little bit more tooth to your paper and it also darkens up the area you spray which in this case I kind of wanted it to darken up a little bit I'm backed up here because I didn't want to get the spray on my camera but now you can kind of see how I just sprayed it I, I kind of let those little um, uh, spots form on purpose it gives kind of an artistic look of course it's dry right now when I'm working but it allows you to kind of just glaze your pastel over top without it showing uh, individual lines and that's kind of what you want to do here you want to make those flowers look like they're buried and so this uh, workable fixative helps with um, getting that um, that idea or that um, appearance uh, now these are harder pastels that I use for little little thin wispy grasses and you want a lot of times you can just twirl it um, you don't want to do all straight lines or all lines going in the same direction uh, that's not what happens in nature they do randomly go with the wind and you know sometimes something will be in the way so just having that same spontaneity that you did in the flowers you want to have in the grasses as well now this is real time and I'm leaving the audio on usually I have to turn the audio off on the video clips because I have music playing in the background that I play on Pandora. I love to listen to just 
instrumental music, uh, ethereal, uh, praise and worship music, and I can't share that music in my video on YouTube or I'll get a, a strike against me. So I have to share only music that has no copyright. But in this case, um, I'm using the beautiful music by Hannah McFarland that is an original piece. So I've been able to play that. Um, but now I had my um, I had my music on Pandora turned down, so you can hear those nice little scratchy sounds. I shared this in our Facebook group, uh, one video of me with the, the scratchy sounds, and I love it, and there's some people that it, it actually bothers them, so I'm sorry if this bothers you, but, but I, I don't know. I just love that. That's very cool to me. I wanted to point out that I'm using a little bit of this purple it's kind of like a, a medium value purple and uh, just I am being so delicate with my touch here there is still some of that workable fixative uh, purples are great for shadows and uh, it's just kind of cooling off and just adding a little color variety uh, down in the roots of those flowers I don't want to overdo it but just I love adding that little bit of purple here and there all right, so I'm speeding up this last little portion of the painting here. I hope you learned a lot. I, I really just had a wonderful time painting today. I've had so much going on in my life, um, oh my gosh, for the past few years that I just truly cherish and appreciate when I get just a couple of hours in my day to paint, turn on the music, and just enjoy, you know, the process of creation. I think it's so beautiful that God says we're created in His image, and I think there's so much more to that than physical, and uh, I just love being able to create, being able to look at the beautiful earth that we have, and, uh, and just praise God for His beauty that He's given us, and try to copy it as well. That's what we're doing, right? <laughs> He's the only original artist, and we're just copycats loving His original work. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this original painting is available for sale. I always forget to say that. And I'm not real good at marketing my work, but um, I, if you would like uh, to inquire about it, um, I will have a link you can click at the end of this video. And also, as always, you can just get in touch with me on my website, uh, SusanJenkinsFineArt.com. You can send me a message on Facebook if you're in our group. And um, just, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Please comment and share this video if you like. And as always, happy, happy painting.